hello 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 welcome back to my channel i'm char and i am coming back to you all today to do something a little different normally when i come on here i um i do a wendy i do like hot topics whatever is most popular whatever's going on um, and I discuss it. I give my point of view, always just my point of view um, and facts because, you know, I try to um, really get whatever is going on from the horse's mouth. You know what I mean? So I don't really try to do the he say, she say thing. I really try to get whatever's happening. I try to get their perspective because, you know, at this point, all the celebs, they have their own platforms. A lot of them have their own YouTube channels now and discuss things and get clarity and tell their side of the story on stuff. They have their own Instagrams and Facebooks. So um, even if it's not managed by them directly, and some of them are, but um, even if it's not, you know, they have their own platform to kind of talk about their life, their business, and present it to you, you know, the way they want their narrative or what have you so i usually try to you know grab from there but um i decided to um i want to keep doing that but i also decided to um start doing reviews of shows that i love that i watch i don't watch that many but some of them i do watch um like for example housewives of potomac they are back on and i also watch um Love and Marriage Huntsville, they have returned as well. Um, both of the first episodes have aired and I will discuss. I also like Ready to Love um, and I, had been I have been watching it the last couple of seasons. I don't know, I just never did um, a, a review on it. And um, when they come back again, I'll, I'll do reviews um, when they come back because I believe they will be... Um, in Washington DC if I'm not mistaken so that'll be fun and when they come back I will do reviews because you know each each season is like another group of people and you think that you know when you first see the episode the first episode you think like oh it's not gonna be exciting or you know I'm not gonna have a favorite couple or a favorite person like I did last season and you always end up having a favorite couple or a favorite person so I will definitely do reviews um on ready to love when they return but um i'm going to take this time to do a review on um love not love and marriage huntsville i think i'll do that review next week um i am a little behind you know this stuff you you got to be on it and you know you you kind of gotta um maximize your time especially if you have a life you have a job you have kids you got other stuff going on you kind of got to balance things out so i will do love and marriage huntsville a little later on in the week it is wednesday so um maybe it'll be by friday or saturday um but tonight this is um housewives of potomac i'll do episode two because that's the episode that i saw i i did not realize that they were back on um a week or so ago or a week or oh, what two weeks ago so that was the first episode so really the first episode just a, re, a quick recap because i did go back and watch it um basically they kind of start off the show with bringing you quickly bringing you up to speed with what everybody is doing what all the girls are doing um um, Karen and her husband, they're just uh, doing them, preparing for a vow renewal. And Wendy Osefo, she did return. She basically is going to reveal to the girls that she had work done. And um, Robin Dixon and her husband, they're pretty much same old, same old. I guess they're still in the process of getting a house built. Um, so that's what they're going through. She seems as though um, she went through some type of like depression or something during COVID um, where she was kind of just sleeping and lounging around a lot. 
and Juan, her husband, or her fiance, ex-husband, now fiance, um, you know, he had to get on her and keep trying to, you know, get her to get out, do stuff, and be social again, basically. And Giselle, pretty much same old, same old with her as well. Um, Giselle, I guess she finally finished that house. Um, I don't know. The house doesn't look that great to me. Um, it does look like a little log cabin or something. It's not the color of wood. It's white, but it just looks like a little cabin, log cabin with a house stuck on the side of it. I don't know. Her house is weird, but, um, it's weird looking on the outside. But um, it looks like she finished decorating it. Um, not really my taste, but, you know, Giselle's taste in clothes. And now we know her home decor is um, a little less to be desired as well, um, in my opinion. And who else? Oh, Candace and her husband, they ended up getting their home, which I'm so happy for her because she really, really wanted a home, uh, a new house, you know. It almost seemed like she was ready to beg, borrow, and steal to get this home, honey. Because she really wanted a new house. And, um, I don't know. The perception is though, um, her and her husband kind of bought this home together. Put their money, pulled their money together and, and, and bought this home. That's the perception. That's what's, you know, they're giving off. But... I don't know. It almost seems as though mommy kind of stepped in and helped them out again. And I only say that because um, in the first episode when they, you know, pan over to Candace and her husband in her new home, which I, I liked her home. It, it, it looked um, pretty. It was beautiful. Um, again, you know, everybody's home decor is different. So, I'm not going to diss her on that. She's using her own taste, so that's fine. Um, but when they were scanning her home or panning to her home on the show, uh, they also panned or took a scene over to her old home, which was the townhouse that her mom owned that her and her husband lived in. And at the bottom of the screen, it said, that home sold for $700,000, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I said I was going to go back to that scene and replay it, but if I'm not mistaken, it said that it sold for $700,000. Now, of course, the mom can sell her home if she wants to because it was her home. And, you know, if she wants to sell it now that her daughter and her husband has moved out, she could do that. But... I want to bet that her mom helped Candace with the down payment for that house that they live in now, the new house. I, I, I'm almost sure of it. I mean, I have absolutely no proof, but she was trying to get money or needed money for their home last season before it went off. Um, that's why they kept having to scale back the house that they were looking at, the houses that they were looking at. They kind of had to keep scaling back because they didn't have the funds. And she was really looking to get restitution out of Monique Samuels with that whole fight incident, but that didn't pan out. It didn't work. So it got thrown out. So that didn't work. So she didn't even get money for that incident. So, where does she come up with money to get this nice, big, fabulous house? I think it's from the sale of the, the townhouse, right? Her mom just sold the townhouse and gave her daughter some money so they can get, you know, have a down payment for their new home. So, really, her and her husband is not really doing it themselves. Mommy is still helping out. But, you know, hey, if you got a mom that can help out and wants to help out, Help out. Um, who else? Uh, oh, and then they're going to be introducing a new couple. Um, her name is Mia. I forgot what her husband's name is. And I forgot their last name as well. I'm sorry. But anyway, um, so they're going to be revealed um, 
primarily on the second episode. I think, I can't remember if we saw them on the first episode. I think we did. Yeah, um, when, not Wendy, but Karen brought her to a dinner over at Wendy's house um, so Wendy can reveal her work. Okay, so that was pretty much the first episode, like a catch up, right? So let's move right on to the second episode of Housewives of Potomac. Okay, so uh, when it first comes on, it goes right to the scene where all the girls are at the house of Wendy at the dinner table. They're all sitting around the table. Mind you, they all have placemats uh, with their names on them. Um, Giselle and Robin had got there a little earlier than everyone else. So they're kind of eyeballing all the names and they're looking at this name, Mia. They're like, who the heck is Mia? And Giselle goes on to say, I don't know that B. I don't know that B. It's like Giselle. You are so nasty. And I mean, it's almost making her ugly how nasty and, and jealous and envious she always acts. Is And if it's not that, if it's not that, then what is it? I mean, she doesn't know the lady, so you can't say you don't like her because you don't know her. You've never even laid, she had not even laid her eyes on the woman as of yet. You know what I mean? The woman hadn't even got there yet. She's just like, I don't know her. I don't know her. I don't know that F that B or whatever. You know, it's like childish. So I don't know. She needs to kind of change that up. She needs to take a step back. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe her daughters can talk to her, you know, because they say they have the, ability to pick out a date for her so i don't know maybe they need to check their mom on how she's acting and let her know it's not a good look anyway so uh, everybody starts to trickle in um karen comes with the new um lady on the show mia and she comes in they're all there they're having cocktails oh i forgot about ashley um ashley is having a second baby she's still in denial about her husband thinking that he's gonna be right but and he and he may be right for now i guess we, we we really don't know um time will tell i guess with the season anyway she came to the dinner um giselle and robin didn't come giselle didn't come because it was uh oh no giselle did come to um Wendy Osepo's dinner. Uh, so they all are sitting around the table. They're asking um, Mia about her, you know, her life. How old is she? Where she works? Uh, where she lives? When um, Mia, I keep saying Wendy, Mia is her name. Mia seemed to not be able to remember how old she was. It was a tie between 32 and 36, I believe. She, um ended up saying that she was 36 years older than her husband and that wasn't really true i mean she really is just 36 and and her husband is quite a few years older than her and that's fine at least she does have a man at least she does have a husband they have a couple of kids she has a um an older child from a previous relationship so she has a total of three um, she's an entrepreneur, um, as it seems. They have quite a few businesses. I think those businesses are chiropractic services or chiropractic offices and a few more other businesses that she runs solely. And um, Oh, and that she also has quite a bit of work done. Um, if I'm not mistaken, she said that she had her lips done She's had a tummy tuck. She's had her butt did. She had her breast done. And she also had something done to her clitoris. And I may be missing something. I may be missing something. But she's had quite a bit of work done. She loves it. She's happy with it. And, you know, she sees no problem with it. And if she wants, she'll do it again. Now, um, at this time... Um, Giselle kind of goes in on Karen, letting Karen know that she uh, needs to apologize and that she uh, had her, her family's name in her mouth and Karen's mouth 
um, all last season and she's going to basically pay if she doesn't apologize. And of course, Karen is basically saying, I don't have to apologize. Everything that she basically said was true as far as Jamal. It was rumors about him having a woman pregnant and it also was rumors that um, he was sleeping with uh, various women from his congregation. I mean, she didn't start the rumors. Uh, she might have perpetuated it, um, I guess, by repeating it, but um, she didn't start the rumors. So, I mean, you can't be mad at her. You can only be mad at Jamal, um, honestly. So, with that being said, Karen basically said, uh-uh, I am not going to apologize. And so Giselle went on to say that, hey, well, you know, I'm going to be reading you um, the rights uh, all season long. One by one, I'm going to let I'm going to talk about how you are an alcoholic. I didn't know she was an alcoholic. I mean, is she an alcoholic? I hardly ever see her drink. I know she has drunk before. Her thing is that when she th when she drinks, you know, she's one of those people when she drinks, she becomes a blabbermouth and she starts to, you know, talk about things that she normally wouldn't talk about and that she really doesn't want to discuss with the girls. And so, yeah, she probably just doesn't know when to cut the drink off to prevent her from talking a lot. I don't think she's an alcoholic, but of course, that's what Giselle said. She called her an alcoholic. Um, she also said that she was broke. Um, talk about those secrets and all this and that. Um, it's just, anyway, nobody's really paying attention to Giselle. I mean, anyway, so they were kind of chopping it up, going back and forth with that. And, you know, all the girls at the table was kind of like, ooh. Um, Karen went on to say that Robin, I mean, that uh, Giselle had a hot box and that she was in Sing Sing or had been to Sing Sing. Now, on the second episode, um... Karen alluded that she wasn't aware that Sing Sing was a jail and that maybe she shouldn't have said that because she's like, Giselle is a lot of things, but I don't think she's been to jail. So maybe I shouldn't have said that. She's like, I'm, she wasn't sure that that was even a jail. She didn't know. But um, nor did she elaborate on this whole hot, back, hot box thing. I'm thinking that might have just been something to shut her up as well and probably doesn't really have any... Um, severity to it or any merit to it so um anyway so the girls are just there discussing wendy finally um comes out and reveals that she had her boobs done she got um i guess breast implants um they are sitting up very nicely they are perky they look firm and they're you know sitting up they're right there and they do they look nice um she also had her butt done. Now, she didn't allude to her having her butt done early on. But she did own up to it later on during the dinner, during the evening. She ended up saying she had her butt done as well. Now, um, which was well needed because Wendy's um, rear end was quite, quite flat. So, it was well needed. and um, But it also seemed like she had something done to her face, too. Because her face is looking, like, snatched. And, 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 and really, it could just be a good makeup artist. You know, makeup, great makeup artists can make you look like you've had a facelift. They really, really can. When they work magic with the brushes and the makeup, they, they can work wonders. Really good makeup artists. So, she may have just got a better makeup artist, maybe. I don't know, but uh, if if not, she did get something done to her face. But um, other than that, maybe she's just using a great makeup artist now. Um, but she looks good. She looks better than she did last season. Just more fresh and modern and um, more polished. Okay? Um, nothing wrong with that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a great episode. It, it, it looks like it's going to get crunk. It looks like it's going to get lit as uh, the episodes go on, um, as they start to reveal things and talk about things. Um, it looks like on episode three, um, Candace and the newest addition to Housewife of Potomac, uh, Mia, 
it looks like they get into it. And I don't know if that's going to be the third episode. Um, but sometime during the season, they get into it. It looks like they're in somebody's kitchen. And maybe Wendy's, I'm not sure yet. Obviously, because the episode hasn't aired yet. But it looks like they have a war of words. And they're throwing like salad or lettuce or something like that. So I'm like, you know, Candace is back at it again. Um... And then also on episode two, it looks like um, Wendy kind of calls out Mia because Mia indicated on the first episode that Giselle was a good, um, had a good heart and that she was a good judge of character. And um, clearly we know that um, Giselle doesn't have a good heart, unfortunately. You know, she's kind of evil or whatever. And um, she ends up finding out that Giselle... Um, wish death on Karen's husband. It looks like she did this a few seasons ago when um, Karen's husband was basically telling her that she's pretty, but looks don't last forever. And that, you know, you might need to try to find a man now while you can, while you still are pretty. I don't know. I think that was a bit much for him to tell her that. So, I mean, really, you're going to get a comeback from a woman when you come at a woman saying that especially somebody else's husband you know what i mean so i don't know i almost don't fault her for that but anyway um karen told the group that she wished death on her husband and i don't know if she did i think she just said her husband would be dead before she starts to look lose her looks she didn't wish death on her husband she just said her husband would be dead or will be dead you know, by the time I start losing my looks or whatever. So that's not really wishing death on him, really. But um, nevertheless, that's what she told the group. And so uh, Wendy, um, I'm sorry, Mia got wind of that and was just like, oh, no, I take it back. She, did, she, she doesn't have a good heart. And I was not a good judge of character on that. My bad, you know, so... Um, Wendy was kind of like, oh, so she don't have a good heart, you know, you, you taking that back now? And she was like, yes, yes. And she was openly like, hey, you know, that was before I heard that. And then Wendy also called her out and was like, but girl, you asked for their numbers. You know what I mean? Like after the dinner, knowing this, you still ask for their numbers. And she went on to say like, oh yeah, I was trying to still see and still give her the benefit of the doubt, yada, yada, yada. No, you know, Mia, I mean, I don't know you that well yet. I, I do like you, but you know, that was a bunch of bull. Like, I don't know what she was on with that, but whatever. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was a uh, pretty uneventful for the second episode. Um, it just looks like it's going to be a little bit of the same. But, you know, they got new blood, they got a new person, they got a new wife and husband um, with some kids and new scenery, their house and, you know, their life and what they're doing. So it should be good. You know what I mean? The first two episodes was a little slow. It starts off a little slow, but toward mid-season, end of the season, you know, it's hot, it's juicy. And, um, yeah, I can't wait. Um, so, yeah. I think that's it. I think I covered everything about Housewives of Potomac, didn't I? Hmm. Yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Um, so, yeah, if you um, know something that I missed or something that I didn't cover about episode two, please comment below. Also, please comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. As I stated, I will be adding reviews for Housewives of Potomac as well as Love and Marriage Huntsville. Love and Marriage Huntsville review will come later on in the week. Thank you guys for being with me and have a great one. Bye.